Hey, it's Angus. Recently, I had the honor of doing the music for Keith Williams' A Short History of the Guitars of Brian May. And I'm going to play that video for us. And before that, I'm just going to talk about the guitars and how I came up with the parts. My history with the music of Queen is, I, of course, loved Queen growing up and worked with musicians that love Queen more than me throughout my career. And then eventually I got hired to play a bunch of Queen music, first for a symphonic Queen tribute, then eventually for Mark Martell, who is hands down one of the greatest interpreters of the catalog, currently working today. And I've also done done other Queen tribute shows along the way. It is uh, so it's something you want to get into. There is definitely call for guitar players that can do it, that can play the part, get the tones, and sing the parts convincingly. So I highly recommend if you want to do that, you should get into it. And here's a few tips on that. So for the tones on this, I used my Fractal FM3. I think I'm using a Morgan AC20 model, which is a AC30 inspired amp. It just sounds, it's just easier to control in the fractal universe. And for this piece, I put together a preset that has some chorus and some phase shifter and has a big stereo delay, 800 millisecond, 1600 millisecond delay that Brian uses on Brighton Rock and on his live solo. So I developed that sound for a recent Queen tribute that I did with Yvonne Pedno from, uh, the uh, Quebec region of France, and it went well. It worked well, so I figured I'd use it on this. And I wrote a piece that pulls from various parts of the Queen catalog. There's some piano. I had to make it feel like Queen, so I cut it with there's some piano on there to do some Bohemian Rhapsody style, style stuff and some Killer Queen type things. And then there's some One Vision and hammer to fall type things. I have a slightly cleaner sound with chorus on it in order to do kind of under pressure arpeggios. And I've got a phase shifter for some of the solos. So the, that covers a lot of what he did over certain eras. Chorus, phase shifter, the big delay sound. And there was also some half cock wah filtering done in order to evoke some of those D key amps sounds that he got. And to cut the whole thing, I used a Brian May Guitars Red Special. And this guitar is, of course, currently available. It's made by Brian May Guitars, sanctioned by Brian May himself. And I'll just give you a quick rundown and review of it. Uh, I really like this guitar. I got it for under $1,000. Uh, it was an open box special at Guitar Center. And it's done great. The only issue I've had with it is this uh, zero fret has a tendency to get pitted and it gets pitted and then the strings make a pinging noise if you bend them closer to the nut. So I've had it replaced and it's actually been replaced twice uh, with a stainless steel fret. So I'm not sure what it is about my playing or the design that makes that happen, but it seems to be an issue for me. Um, and it's surmountable you know it's not nothing that's going to make you not want the guitar the tuners are a little hard to thread but then they work great uh and on the upsides i really love the bridge the wilkinson bridge has some neat design features that i like the electronics work great i will say that in getting the brian may sounds his his live sound is primarily just the bridge and middle pickups in phase. And that sound sounds exactly the way you want it to, and it's great. There are some specific things like on Killer Queen where he uses the neck and middle out of phase, and that sound on this guitar is really noisy, super hummy and buzzy, and it's hard to get to. So the way I have it set up, this pickup is knocked out of phase. These two are in phase. And so the main sound is these two are on. And then to get the out of phase sound, you do that, which is really awkward. It's a really awkward thing to have to do to switch pickups. So instead of using his neck and middle out of phase sound, I have a tendency to just use a filter effect like a half cock wah wah and to, to get those sounds live because it has not as much hum and you don't have the issue with how to switch to it. 
for crazy little thing called love, I would probably just use the neck by itself. So just that. And then, then you're back to this for the rest of the show. And that's pretty much how I deal with it. So that's all there is to say about it. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I think this is a great guitar. I think learning to play the music of Queen is something that every guitar player should go through to some degree over the course of their career. And I'm really glad that I've had the ability to play it with some of the best folks doing it on the planet. So let's hear the track. Thank you so much. I'm Angus Clark. Thank you. 